Hello everyone, Hearthstone and today I am making another video. Today's video is about pterosaurs. Pterosaurs are flying reptiles which lived in the Mesozoic era alongside dinosaurs. They are not dinosaurs even though they do come under Archosauria. Pterosaurs have become well known throughout the world. They were the largest living things to take flight. So today let's take a deeper look into them. History In 1784, Cosimo Alessandro first discovered Pterodactylus. Coined by George Cuvier, it went finger wing. Cosimo said that it was a flying reptile. This was a new idea, since at that time, the idea of a reptile flying was considered improbable by most naturalists. Cosimo was right, but the naturalists at that time came up with the idea that the thing between that elongated finger and body was not a wing, but a flipper. And after Dactylus was a marine reptile. Evolution the non-dinosaur ancestor to all pterosaurs has not been discovered yet. The pterosaurs probably evolved from tree-dwelling reptiles with thin stretches of skin between the legs. This enabled them to glide from one tree to another. Although it just kept the reptiles from falling, the principle was there. The oldest pterosaur fossils found go back to the Triassic period, 230 to 200 million years ago. These are called Ramphorhynchids. They include creatures like Eudimorphodon, Dorignathus, and Ramphorhynchus. They had thin, long tails and the bone structures in later pterosaurs. By the Jurassic, the Ramphorhynchids had been replaced by pterodactyloids, who had short tails and large wings. In the Cretaceous period, the pterosaurs had evolved to become quite colorful, like the Tupaxala and Tapajara, and also big, like Quetzalcoatlus and Zegiangopterus. Diet the earliest pterosaurs were probably insectivores. Later, the beaks evolved for a more fish-eating diet. There were exceptions though, like the filter feeder Pterodostro and the shellfish eater Sungareptorus. Larger ones like Quetzalcoatlus and Zygiangopterus had beaks for preying like stalks. This included fishing stock and stalking through the grass for snakes and lizards. It's also possible that some flew around scavenging for carrion. There is speculation that pterosaurs became omnivores or at the far end maybe even frugivores or fruit eaters. Range Pterosaur fossils are there, mostly because the bones are very light and they easily get crushed under heavy sediment deposits. Pterosaurs lived mostly in modern day North America and Europe. Although there may have been more American and pterosaur populations anatomically distinct from the ones we know today. Okay, it's time for some species worth noting. Eudimorphodon. It's one of the oldest pterosaurs known, being almost 215 million years old. Dimorphodon. It looks interesting. This is the one in Jurassic World. Dorignathus. It had teeth made for fishing with its teeth being specialized to increase its catching area. Quetzalcoatlus. This one was gigantic. The fo one fossil was initially thought to have a wingspan of 15 meters, but even though it was re later reduced to 11 meters, it's still massive for a pterosaur or a flying creature in general. It was capable of flying for 7 to 10 days at altitudes of 4,500 meters. Furthermore, its maximum flight range could have been 19,000 kilometers. This was truly a wonder. Pterodostro This pterosaur had several hundred bristle-like teeth in its jaw. It scooped up water and the teeth filtered the plankton. Sungareptors It had an upward curving snout which was ideal for leveling shellfish from mud. The teeth at the back of the snout cracked open the shells. Its diet is thought to be exclusively shellfish. Tupaxara It had a crest with blood vessels flowing through it. It would have pushed blood through the vessels resulting in a striking display of colors. Nyactosaurus That crest is very big. Also one more fact. There is no animal called pterodactyl. It is just a shortened form of pterodactylus and does not represent any genus. The one which People refer to when saying pterodactyl is actually pteranodon. Anatomy Pterosaurs were lightweight. Their bones were hollow and could be filled with air. 
Although this is the reason terrace of fossils get crushed under sediment deposits, the living animals won't have bothered about a proper burial. The bones were also rigid, ensuring that the wings kept their shape. Terrace was also had fichno fibers, their equivalent of mammal hair, though the structure of mammal hair and fichno fibers is different. The purpose of fichno fibers is insulation to maintain body temperature. This has led to the speculation that terrace was warm blooded. Though this would lead to higher metabolism, which would in turn lead to higher rate of respiration, the air sacs or the air storing compartments in lungs, which are also present in modern day birds, would have handled that. Now the wings. Pterosaur wings are not skin supported by bony rods. No, that is wrong. The first stretch of skin went from the shoulder to the wrist. The hands had four fingers or digits as they are actually called. The first digits were not connected to the wing and were used to get grip. The fourth digit was extremely elongated and from it towards the body and sometimes the hindquarters was the main wing area. The wing wasn't just one big stretch though. There was an interlacing pattern of fibers known as actinofibrils. This strengthened the wing, especially when they had to turn mid-flight. Predators Although pterosaurs could fly, they were still prone to danger. There have been specimens with teeth of theropods like spinosaurids and dromaeosaurids in them. Also, when stopping at lakes to drink, they had to be aware of the plesiosaurs and pliosaurs hunting for them. Extinction The ram for inquiries who may be outcompeted by birds. Birds are more agile and, in general, better at surviving. However, the most commonly accepted and probable reason is the KPG mass extinction. Even if some pterosaurs survived the impact, they would have been killed by the aftermath. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Until then, goodbye.